What's your opinion this quote, can't feed them, don't breed them? Tiger King should have learned that saying, just saying. Oh wow. Read through a lot of the comments, and I have to say, I never thought of kids, but of pets. I sometimes I think mine eat better than I do, and I am pretty meticulous. So, story time. I had a barn, and people dumped cats at barns. My rule was, if you show up here, you get spayed slash neutered, you get shots, you get food and water, you get shelter, and you get attention. Well this one cat showed up, with two kittens. She was so skinny, we didn't realize she was pregnant. We already had two barn cats, now we were up to five, and she had a litter of six. So we're up to eleven. I rounded them up, and fortunately my vet gave me volume discounts, so we got most of them squared away, but there was one I could not catch on that day. She ran off, and returned weeks later, yes, pregnant. She was young and had a small litter, and we were up to sixteen. Nailed them all with the space slash neuter hot steel. I only feed top quality, so holy crap. I didn't breed any of them, but they had their own ideas. Found homes for most, took care of the rest. I always took the saying to mean if you know you can't afford a child, do not purposefully bring one into the world. I understand the importance of all the but what if something goes wrong after? And not every pregnancy slash baby is wanted arguments, but if you right now are unable to take care of a child adequately, do not have one. Edit, while this post blew up dot underscore. I didn't expect that. Thank you guys for the upvotes and stuff. I do want to clarify something real quick, I'm not saying poor people can't have kids. It's hard to hear for a lot of people, but children are a money, time, and emotional investment. If you're not ready for that, you're not ready for a child. It's not racist or classist to not want children to suffer. So, my mom used to work at a low-income housing unit that was basically a renovated hotel. She told me that, when she worked there, single people and couples with no kids would get what was essentially just a hotel room with a basic kitchen, but parents would get, like, a small cabin nearby, or something. But the kids were only allowed to stay with the parents until a certain age, I think 18, and would get moved to a single room once they hit that age, and the parents would get moved back to the hotel rooms when all their kids aged out. The result was a lot of 17-year-olds intentionally trying to have children, so they could get the better cabin, as well as older women trying to continue to have children for as long as possible to keep their cabin. Which, I get that it's hard to live when you're that poor, but it strikes me as a particularly dickish thing to do to have children solely to get better benefits. If you can't feed them, eat them? I was the result of someone breeding me into the world and feeding me but even as a kid, I had very few clothes and other necessities. I was one of the poorest kids in my school. Living as a child, forced to wear the same clothes almost daily while you see other children having so much more than you is not a happy life to live, no matter how many justifications one can try to find. It's for that reason I refuse to allow my future children to suffer in a similar fashion. I consider myself to be pretty liberal, and try to understand that some poorer families may not have been that way before the kids were born. Medical debt, disability, etc. can all bankrupt a family pretty quickly. That being said, I knew a family with 11 kids who were always trying for more. They had very little money and relied on local churches for clothes and food. Their kids weren't schooled or given any one-on-one -on -one time because the parents were always so busy trying to make ends meet. I can't understand how you can look at 11 hungry faces around you every day and think that you should try to make it 12. Then make contraceptives easy to get and less expensive. Then grasp the idea that abortion sucks but can be necessary. I am in a similar situation. We planned for a kid. Not for an effing pandemic. Thank God we saved a lot of money. We had a kid end of 2018. We weren't well off, but we were financially stable at least and figured we were starting to get older, it's now or never. I was laid off in the start of 2019, with a 5-month-old who needed a $2 million surgery to remove half her lung. After insurance we ended up paying around $68k? 
luckily still had insurance at that point. Seven months of not finding work as three other tech companies all laid off at the same time. Unemployment effed me, so I never saw any of that. When I finally found work, it was 1,000 miles away, so we had to burn the last of our savings to move and find a place to live. Went into a pandemic with no money, in a new town, a new home, and we lost our dog suddenly and unexpectedly in February right before everything shut down in March. Laid off again in August, found remote contract work, but had to buy gov. Insurance at $700 per month. Wasn't about to be without insurance in the middle of a pandemic. Lost that job four months later when they cut contracts. I had two weeks notice to find a new job. My first day at my current job was two days after my last day there. We planned for a kid, we planned for a possible emergency as much as we could, we didn't plan for the effing crap storm the world has been for the past year. I completely agree with your first point we can't judge people's entire life just by a glance and that people who initially had things in order to raise a child to be screwed over by life. Also, people judging others because EU poor and looking in disgust instead of lending of hand is just disgusting. I interpret the question as if you aren't in a good financial, and emotional, state to have children, don't hate children. Despite it being this evolutionary urge for, some of, us to reproduce, and the idea of raising a new life is nice, if you are initially in a bad financial slash mental spot and still want to have kids, then you forget that the child isn't an extension of you and will be affected by this. You'll have to be able to take care of them and guide them which requires being stable enough to support them until they can themselves. I don't think it's fair to bring a life to this world where things aren't at least as near as perfect as they can be and not think about the mental impacts that can have on a growing child. Edit, I should also mention, that this is a systemic problem and I just wanted to point out my surface level interpretation of the quote. The biggest issue here is the idea that poor bad, let's judge and sex icky, your fault if get slash get someone pregnant. Impoverished people deserve the right to have sex like any middle class person can, and we need to make resources available to help with contraception if needed or you know, help people not be impoverished. Wife had a reasonable high earning father. As a kid father was a child molester. When she told her mother, her mom literally couldn't afford to divorce him. She eventually did, but she had to scrape every penny she could together. When she left, she had three kids and looked like the poster child for the phrase, too. Abusers don't always look like abusers, and sometimes you find out once it's too late. Thank you for your comment. Even from a financial side though the cost is negligible. Compare how much gets put into welfare systems to most other tax spending and it is minuscule. It is not about paying for someone's bad decisions, more about supporting your fellow human for the better of society as a whole. The people that rant about welfare queens are also the people who seem to have no complaint when the government orders up another 300 million worth of M1A Abrams tanks that will just sit and rust in a yard somewhere because tanks haven't been relevant on the battlefield for years now. Or when the government props up failing financial firms because if they collapse the whole economy does too. I would much rather my money go toward supporting a family in my community than toward a drone strike on a wedding in Pakistan. This comment needs to be up top. We don't know people's circumstances and on a whole tend to be way too quick to judge. I'm so sorry this happened to you it must have been really hard for you. Yeah I often see people being like you shouldn't have had kids if you can't afford them. When the kids are like 8 years and older. It's such a place of privilege to be unaware that someone could absolutely have been able to afford their children only to have something awful happen, especially if the kid in question isn't even a baby anymore. All you need is one spousal death plus one medical emergency to end up homeless even if you were doing well before. And like you said, regardless of someone's bad decision to keep having kids, the kids aren't at fault. Don't punish them with starvation and bad education and homelessness because they have a deadbeat dad or a drug addict mom. I mean in the space of about 10 months I needed a crown and one of my mom's teeth broke. Even with insurance for me, together both procedures were the equivalent of like two and a half months of rent. Things happen and you can go from doing well to horrible really quickly. Luckily in our case, the dentist is more than willing to do payment plans and my mom was able to get care credit, so it didn't cost as much as it could have. Yes that means more taxes go to social safety nets, 
but it's better than the alternative of starving kids and inescapable poverty. I will gladly pay more in taxes if that means no one goes hungry. Came here to say the same but you did it way better. My dad died in a car accident, and then we also struggled financially especially after my mom got sick. I've always hated the way people talk about single moms too, it's not like most have a choice. Poverty is horrible for a kid. Growing up my parents worked their butts off yet many time we had nothing to eat except moldy old fruit. I won't judge a single mom with a lot of kids, like you said, maybe her hubby died, but I will feel sorry most for the kids, going to school with no lunch money is embarrassing and horrible for someone who didn't ask to come to this world. Agreed, but access to abortion and contraception seems to be the bigger issue here, people are going to have sex, we can't and shouldn't try to control that but we can and should try to make options accessible to people. I think it's safe to say that most women do want their children to be safe and healthy but unfortunately it doesn't always work out that way. We're so quick to judge people for things that are so often out of their control and I find that very frustrating. My taxes pay for the fire department to come save your home even though you accidentally left the stove on and caused the fire. No one will ever save Ailp. If you can't guarantee your house won't catch fire then you shouldn't buy a house because we all know that bad things happen and that's why we have services to help people out of situations beyond their control. I don't understand why services like abortions and education and products like contraception aren't available to women who need and want them, but we have no issue with our taxes going towards emergency services and other types of infrastructure that are needed for all the other mistakes and accidents that happen in our lives. As with most bumper sticker length wisdom, it ignores reality. I appreciate the sentiment of if you can't afford kids, don't have them. But life can change at the drop of a hat. How many people got pregnant 18 months ago, had a roof over their heads and decent jobs? They were ready to start a family. Now, they are unemployed because they lost their job due to COVID and the only reason they haven't been kicked out of their house slash apartment is because of the temporary ban on kicking people out. Or, how many people lost a spouse due to an unexpected illness or an accident and are now single parents that cannot afford the kid they had? So, it is easy to say if you can't afford a kid, don't have one. But it is also easy to go from being able to afford one to not being able to afford one by one stroke of bad luck. So, how about instead of judging people we just epping help them and treat them like human beings? just a way for crafty conservatives to support cutting government aid to children. I listen to a conservative Christian podcaster, but he's an actual red-letter Christian. His belief, government should take care of the people who can't take care of themselves, so children, elderly, the disabled. The fact that children shouldn't starve is now a partisan issue shows how far mainstream conservatism in America has fallen. Having kids is not something people should do without having a good plan. I see too many people getting kids that are unfit to take care of themselves, much less a kid. Same applies to people getting animals. Free no question birth control, no parental say needed. People are going to have sex, drunk or sober, when you're horny you aren't in peak decision making mode, at least make baby control easy. Don't want to subsidize them, don't block abortion. I'd be fine with this viewpoint if it was always coupled with strong advocacy for comprehensive sex education and access to birth control slash contraceptives. In an ideal society every child would be a wanted and cared for child. I'm not fine with it as a way to shame people after the fact or to argue against social safety nets. It's also interesting to note that when more people begin following this advice, there are far more articles asking why the birth rate is so low than why average wages are so insufficient for raising a family. A moral dilemma that one should have with themselves that should not be dictated, monitored or enforced by some third party, but it's cool if to inform. Since you asked, anyone that can sum up a major social problem on one clever line is woefully undereducated on the issue. It's an entitled oversimplification of a systemic problem surrounding both economics and education. It sounds wise, but it's almost always used by someone who is prejudiced against some other group. 
I most often hear it from white racists about poor African Americans or Latinos. Secondarily, I hear it from right-wing people who are against abortion and birth control, but resent having to pay for taxes to fund services for children and families. Usually breed is applied to animals. Part of the implicit message of this statement is that people who the speaker has contempt for are more animal than human. Whoever is saying it better be handing out free birth control. The concept of can't feed them shouldn't exist in America. Given our wealth and the fact we are one of the most overweight countries that waste the most food. Oh and of course the fact that our country was founded on Christian values and feeding the poor is what Jesus would do. Unfortunately situation especially involving money can change in an instant. I mean, I am not about to try to have a kid I can't afford. And, there are some people whose procreation habits I disagree with. But, those are my choices and personal opinions that have f all to do with others. You want to talk policy? Comprehensive sex education, easy and affordable birth control, and abortion access are what reduce unwanted pregnancies and unplanned parenthoods. As to folks struggling to afford children, it has a lot to do with efforts struggling to afford surviving at this point. Fix income inequality, then we can talk about the choice of having kids people can't afford. But ultimately, I'm still in favor of setting up society to support innocent children of irresponsible parents, rather than punish children for parental actions outside of the children's control. Edit, adorable, affordable. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.